Hi, my name is Doug Phillips. I'm the Director of Research and Development for Cerebral Health. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about brain anatomy and some of the various regions of the brain. I first became interested in the brain while I was working with a neurosurgeon and I saw a few surgeries where we actually went into the cerebral cortex and when I saw the living brain for the first time it was the most beautiful thing I think that I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, the level of complexity that it was evident there, um, the, the, the magnificent colors that spread throughout all the brain. Um, it was just something that um, was just awe-inspiring and something that I think will forever uh, change how I look and uh, perceive um, this level of sophistication. I mean, it's uh, something that is really quite remarkable and something that we all possess um, and something that uh, is in each and every one of us. So I want to talk a few minutes about the brain, the, the various kinds of organizations uh, in the brain, and um, discuss with you uh, simply uh, what these regions do and how we might um, understand the brain better by better understanding its anatomy. The brain coordinates the activity of approximately one trillion cells. A uh, hundred billion of these cells are neurons and of these neurons they communicate with one another via synapses and the synapses are about uh, 500 trillion in number uh, to think about this level of uh, integrated complexity uh, 500 trillion synapses and 100 billion neurons uh, communicating at light speeds is really quite remarkable and one of the reasons why I've been enamored with the brain for really quite some time and I hope that we uh, gain much more insight about the brain as we move forward uh, with various brain mapping technologies uh, and uh, the neurosciences generally. So I want to talk to you uh, first about the brain stem uh, the brain stem uh, is at the uh, base of the brain and is perhaps the oldest evolutionary structure of the brain and this is where uh, information from the rest of our body uh, comes in and we begin to um, uh, integrate that information and coordinate that information with the cerebral cortex and higher level regions of the brain but it's interesting that the brain stem uh, also helps to regulate uh, sleep cycles uh, some of our respiratory and cardiac uh, functions and uh, really plays an integral and important part uh, to the physiological uh, functioning of the body overall. Uh, another area of the brain that seems to be quite old evolutionarily uh, are the cerebellum. Uh, the cerebellum uh, help to um, process and help us um, uh, move in the world around us. Uh, it helps with motor control generally, with coordination, with the precision and timing of the coordination, with the various kinds of uh, movement uh, generally that we uh, do with our hands and our legs and um, uh, how we just coordinate ourselves uh, generally in the world around us. Uh, it may also help to regulate uh, fear and pleasure responses, uh, the cerebellum here, and it seems that the cerebellum may help with mental imagery. It seems that there may be a link between the brainstem and the cerebellum, uh, particularly with REM dream uh, sleep and how those images are being uh, conveyed during sleep cycles uh, and where exactly they come from. So it's going to be interesting to see in the years to come uh, how we understand the dreaming brain more uh, specifically and how <clears throat> perhaps the brainstem and the cerebellum uh, coordinate some of the dreams that we do have. So these are two of the oldest areas uh, evolutionarily uh, in the brain and perhaps uh, the first to develop uh, in our uh, long history as a species and um, ones that uh, certainly play vital roles um, in, in uh, motor movement uh, with imagery and with the regulation of the heart, uh, circulatory uh, processes in the body and um, uh, as we said earlier, uh, uh, sleep cycles uh, generally. So let me put this back for just a moment. Um, the next region of the brain I want to talk about um, is the occipital lobe. And the occipital lobes uh, are back here in the base of the brain. And what's interesting about the occipital lobes is they process uh, visual information. And so what we're having is we have visual information coming obviously through our uh, eyes and retinas. And then it gets kind of looped back into 
the back um, back of our brain, which is very interesting, uh, how this information is being co conveyed from our visual centers and then uh, processed in uh, the, the back regions of our brain. Uh, if we do have uh, different lesions to the brain, as neurologists have found out, uh, these can cause various kinds of hallucinations um, with re uh, lesions in this area. We can also uh, have a difficult time processing the colors and not being able to recognize uh, the differences between colors if there's various uh, lesions in this region of the brain. And so it plays a very important part in imagery and uh, with visual processing uh, generally. One of the most uh, pronounced areas of the human brain that really differentiates us, I think, from other species are the uh, temporal lobes. Uh, generally, they seem to be much more um, uh, wider and bigger in volume than we see with other mammals and other uh, animals generally. And we also see some development, obviously, with the uh, frontal lobes uh, of the human brain that are, is quite different as well. Uh, with the temporal lobes, we have um, auditory processing generally. So here it's very different than you know, the visual processing systems. Uh, here we have information coming in uh, through our ears, being processed by the temporal lobes, and then being uh, integrated throughout the various other systems and brain regions uh, generally. Uh, with the temporal lobes, we also have the hippocampus on the interior um, areas of the uh, temporal lobe, uh, right in near the um, um, brainstem. Uh, this area also seems to coordinate uh, language and semantics generally. Uh, neurologists and brain uh, research scientists have found that there's two areas that are specific to um, language processing and the understanding of language. Uh, the first of which uh, that I want to discuss is the Broca's area, which is right around here. Uh, Broca's area helps to uh, coordinate speech production generally. Uh, it also, it seems, may help with um, uh, speech comprehension uh, to some extent, but it's definitely one of the areas that we've found that uh, is certainly very important and critical to uh, language formation and use uh, generally. There's also another area of the brain towards the back of the temporal lobes called Wernicke's area. And in uh, Wernicke's area here, we see that um, speech may become unintelligible if there's uh, damage to this particular region. Uh, we may not be able to understand uh, our own words if there's uh, significant damage. Uh, and it seems that both Broca's area and Wernicke's area work in tandem with one another, processing information uh, to and from both of these particular regions. and. Um, we're able to utilize language uh, due to that. It seems that the development of uh, language centers in the human brain have been critical to our evolutionary development, both as uh, the human species uh, generally, um, but um, uh, culturally, how we've developed culturally, the ways in which we've been able to develop uh, mathematics, uh, the natural sciences, uh, logic, um, all of these uh, things that we've um, been able to utilize to help us uh, become much more sophisticated culturally uh, and socially uh, seem to be in large part and measure um, brought about through the evolutionary development of these language centers. And it's really interesting to see how this uh, area has developed um, both in adults and in uh, infants and children. Uh, how the language centers begin to integrate and begin to um, process all this various information. You see at the top area of the brain uh, are the parietal lobes. And the parietal lobes integrates the sensory information that we have. It also assists with uh, different kinds of spatial orientation and navigation in, in the exterior world around us and allows us to move you know, um, along streets or into buildings and um, be able to go to the right rooms and, and navigate ourselves generally. It also seems that the parietal lobes was, is very instrumental in helping us understand numbers, uh, being able to uh, know things mathematically, uh, how we're able to differentiate between various kinds of numbers um, and what the differences mean. Uh, so the parietal lobes are integral to um, our understanding of mathematics and, and numbers generally. This will conclude part one of our introduction to brain anatomy and I'll move forward uh, next time.